Hello friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Edda. Today in this video we will discuss the classification of fluid. Where we will see what are the different types of fluids, the difference between ideal and real fluid, difference between compressible and incompressible fluid, difference between Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. Then lastly what are the different types of non-Newtonian fluid. Now let's see this one by one. So, what is the classification of fluids? So the first classification of fluid is Ideal fluid Real fluid Then based on the behavior of the fluids Under the action of externally applied pressure and temperature The fluids are classified as Compressible fluid and incompressible fluids Then based upon the behavior of fluids under the action of shear stress. The fluids are classified as Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluids. Next question. What is the difference between ideal fluid and real fluid? So the difference between ideal fluids and real fluids as So ideal fluid is a fluid that does not offer resistance to flow, deformation, change in shape. But real fluid offers resistance when it is set in motion. Then ideal fluid has no viscosity. But real fluid has viscosity. Then the ideal fluid is frictionless and incompressible. But the real fluid is not frictionless. Then an ideal fluid does not exist in nature and therefore it is an imaginary fluid. And all naturally occurring fluids are real fluids. Now next question. What is the difference between compressible fluid and incompressible fluid? So as we know based on the behavior of the fluids under the action of externally applied pressure and temperature. The fluids are classified as compressible fluid and incompressible fluids. So if the density of fluid changes only slightly. With moderate changes in temperature and pressure, the fluid is said to be incompressible. Means. The density of the incompressible fluid is not appreciably affected by moderate changes in temperature and pressure. Or we can say that the density of the incompressible fluid is almost insensitive to moderate changes in temperature and pressure. But if the density of fluid changes is significant with changes in temperature and pressure, the fluid is said to be compressible. Means the density of the compressible fluid is affected appreciably by changes in temperature and pressure. Or in other words, we can say that the density of a compressible fluid is sensitive to changes in temperature and pressure. Then liquids are generally considered to be incompressible. And gases are compressible. Now next question. What is the difference between Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid? As we know based on the behavior of fluids under the action of shear stress the fluids are classified as Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluids. So, fluids that obey Newton's law of viscosity are called as Newtonian fluids. But fluids that do not follow Newton's law of viscosity are called as non-Newtonian fluids. Then for Newtonian fluids. The ratio of the shear stress to the rate of shear or shear rate is constant. Hence a plot of tau versus du by dy is straight line passing through the origin. But for non-Newtonian fluids, the ratio of the shear stress to the shear rate is not constant. And it is considered a function of the rate of shear. Then the viscosity of a Newtonian fluid is independent of the rate of shear or shear rate. But the viscosity of a non-Newtonian fluid varies with the rate of shear or shear rate. Examples of Newtonian fluids are all gases, air, liquids such as kerosene, alcohol, glycerin, benzene, hexane ether etc. Solutions of inorganic salts and of sugar in water. Examples of non-Newtonian fluids are toothpastes, paints, gels, jellies, slurries and polymer solutions. Now next question. What are the types of non-Newtonian fluids? There are three common types of non-Newtonian fluids. First one is Bingham fluids or Bingham plastics. Then pseudoplastic fluids. And dilatant fluids. 
so the bingham fluids do not deform that means bingham fluids flow unless a threshold shear stress value tau zero is not exceeded because these fluids resist a small shear stress tau zero indefinitely but flow linearly under the action of larger shear stress examples are toothpaste jellies paints suede sludge and some slurries then the next type is pseudoplastic fluids so the viscosity of pseudoplastic fluids decreases with an increase in velocity gradient that is shear rate pseudoplastics are said to be shear rate thinning because from the graph we can see that the curve for pseudoplastic fluid passes through the origin then it is concave downward at lower shear and becomes nearly linear at high shear Examples are blood, solution of high molecular weight polymers, paper pulp, muds, most slurries and rubber latex. Then the next type is dilatant fluid. So the viscosity of dilatant fluids increases with an increase in velocity gradient. And dilatant fluids are said to be shear rate thickening. Because from the graph we can see that. The curve for dilatant fluid passes through the origin. Then it is concave upward at the low shear and becomes nearly liner at high shear. Examples are suspensions of starch in water, pulp in water, and sand-filled emulsions. The experimental curves for pseudoplastic as well as dilatant fluids can be represented by a power law, which is also called the oswald de Weyl equation. Tau is equal to K into du by dy raised to n, where K and n are arbitrary constants. The values of K and n are different for different fluids. So for Newtonian fluids n equals 1, k equals micro. For pseudoplastic fluids n less than 1. And dilatant fluids n greater than 1. So that is all about the classification of fluid. Where we discussed. What are the different types of fluids? The difference between ideal and real fluid. Difference between compressible and incompressible fluid. Difference between Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. Now what are the different types of non-Newtonian fluid? In the next video, we will discuss another topic. If you like my video,